Hello guys, welcome to Data Fuse Analytics, where the concepts are simplified and explained intuitively. In this video, we will be studying the entire tree of transformers and I will be introducing you to important transformer architectures which are available. As you all know, there are three important architectures for transformer models, namely encoder, decoder and encoder-decoder architecture. As you all know, the early transformer models initial success spurred an explosion in models development. In this explosion, the researchers started creating models using a variety of datasets of varying size and types, adopting new pre-training objectives and modifying the model architectures to further boost performance in different tasks. Although the family of models is still growing at a rapid pace, they still can be divided into the above discussed categories, namely encoders, decoders and encoder-decoder architectures. Up till now, there are more than 50 different architectures available in Hugging Face Transformers. In this video, I will cover some of the few important milestones. Let's start with encoder branch. Do you know? The first encoder model only based on transformer was BERT. When BERT paper was published, it outperformed various existing state-of-the-art or SOTA models on different evaluation metrics like BLEEV. Various NLU or natural language understanding challenges like text classification, name identity recognition, etc. can be solved using encoder-only models. Now, Let's look at different famous and important encoder-only models. The first model that we will be discussing is BERT. In this, BERT stands for Bidirectional Encoder Representations from Transformers. BERT is pre-trained by keeping following two training objectives which are as follows. The first training objective is predicting MASH tokens in the text which is also called as Masked Language Modeling or MLM. The second pre-training objective is determining if one text passage is likely to follow another text passage. This is also called as NSP or Next Sentence Prediction Objective. The next encoder-only model is Distill BERT. As discussed, BERT outperformed many state-of-the-art architectures, but the industry needed some lightweight version of BERT to deploy in production environment. This gave rise to Distill BERT, which is a distilled version of BERT. This Distill BERT architecture is trained using knowledge distillation technique. Distill BERT is a whooping 60% fast than BERT and its memory footprint is 40% less too. Distill BERT achieves this by maintaining 97% of the BERT's performance in terms of accuracy. The next encoder-only architecture is Roberta. Roberta stands for Robustly Optimized BERT Pre-Training Approach. Roberta aims to improve BERT's performance by slightly modifying the pre-training scheme or pre-training objective. Roberta is trained on longer sequences or longer sentences on more training data than BERT and it drops the NSP or Next Sentence Prediction training objective of BERT. These two changes made Roberta improve its performance when compared with BERT. The next encoder-only architecture is called as XLM. XLM is an improved version of BERT which is capable to perform cross-lingual language tasks like text classification and machine translation. XLM learns to map words from different languages by using byte pair encoding or BPE and a dual language training mechanism. XLM introduces an additional training objective which is called as Translation Language Modeling or TLM in short. TLM or Translation Language Modeling can be viewed as an extension of MLM or Marx Language Modeling which we discussed during BERT. XLM model achieved state-of-the-art results on multilingual NLU or natural language understanding benchmarks as well as on translation tasks. The next encoder-only architecture is XLM Roberta. It is also called as XLM-R. This is an extension of XLM 
that incorporates massive training data. To train XLMR, common crawl corpus is used. This common crawl corpus does not contain parallel text. Hence, the TLM or Translation Language Modeling Training Objective which was used in XLM was removed. An interesting point is that XLMR beats XLM and even BERT by huge margin in different tasks especially those including low resource languages. The next encoder only architecture is ALBERT. ALBERT is an efficient transformer architecture. The following are the three modifications that makes ALBERT efficient. The first modification is that the token embedding is decoupled from the hidden dimension. This makes embedding dimension to be small especially when vocabulary is huge or when vocabulary is large which help it to save model parameters. The second change is that all the layers share parameters. This helps to decrease the final total effective parameters. The final modification which makes Albert efficient is that the NSP or next sentence prediction objective is replaced with sentence ordering prediction. In sentence ordering prediction objective, the model predicts whether the order of two consecutive sequences was swapped or not. These three modifications or these three changes made Albert to train for larger model with fewer parameters efficiently. The next encoder only architecture is called as Electra. One of the major limitations of marked language modeling or MLM training objective is that only the marks tokens are updated at each step while the other input tokens remain as it is. Electra solves this issue by using a two model approach. Model 1 is like a regular MLM and tries to predict marks tokens whereas model 2 act as a discriminator and the aim of this model 2 is to predict which of the token in the first model's output were originally marked. The final encoder architecture that we will be discussing is Diberta. Diberta is the first model to beat human baseline on the superglue benchmark. For people who do not know what superglue benchmark is, a superglue benchmark is a more difficult version of glue consisting of several subtasks used to measure NLU performance or natural language understanding task performance. Diberta makes two major architectural changes which are as follows. First architectural changes is that each token is represented as two vectors. One vector is for the content and the another vector is for relative position. This makes the self-attention layers to better model the dependency of nearby token pairs. Diberta uses relative position representations. This is achieved by modifying the internal mechanism itself by introducing a few additional terms or parameters. Now that we have gone through important encoder only architectures, let's look into decoder only architectures now. The development of transformer decoder models has mostly been driven by OpenAI. These models are mostly utilized for text generation tasks because of how well they predict the next word in a sequence. Because they are so accurate at predicting the next word in the sequence, these models are mostly used for text generation tasks. Let's examine the development of these interesting text generation models. The first decoder model that we will be talking about is GPT. GPT stands for Generative Pre-trained Transformer. GPT is pre-trained by predicting the next word based on the previous ones. GPT is trained on the book corpus and achieved significant great results on downstream tasks such as classification. Then the next decoder model is CTRL in which CTRL stands for Conditional Transformer Language. We all know that GPT is used to autocomplete an input given the input prompt. But the major limitation is that we as a user has very less control over the style of generated sequence or text. This CTRL model addresses this issue by introducing something called as control tokens at the beginning of the sequence. This allows the user to control the text generation allowing for diverse text generation. The next decoder only model 
we will be looking into is GPT-2. You all might have heard about GPT-2. GPT-2 is inspired by its predecessor which is named as GPT. GPT is upscaled and the training data is increased which gave birth to GPT-2. Highlight of GPT-2 is that it can produce long coherent text. GPT-2 was released in a stage-wise fashion due to few concerns about its misuse. Smaller models were published first and then the final full model was published. The next decoder model that we will be looking into is GPT-3. GPT and GPT-2 were a huge success in the tech generation domain. An analysis was conducted on a few parameters like compute, data set size, model size and performance of language model. The results of this analysis was upscaling GPT-2 100 times to yield this GPT-3. GPT-3 has whooping 175 billion parameters. This model has excellent tech generation capacities, but the highlight of GPT-3 is few short learning capability. It means that GPT-3 was able to solve novel tasks with very few input examples. OpenAI has not yet open sourced this model, but GPT-3 can be accessed via an interface which is provided by OpenAI. The final model of decoder only that we will be looking into is GPT-Neo or GPT-J6B. These are like GPT models which are trained by Eleuther AI. These models are smaller versions when we compare it with GPT-3. These models have about 1.3 2.7 and 6 billion parameters. The last branch in transformer tree is the encoder decoder branch. Let's take a look in some of the famous models. The first encoder decoder architecture that we will be seeing is T5. The T5 stands for text to text transfer transformer. As the full form suggests, the T5 model combined NLU and NLG tasks by converting them to text-to-text -text task. For text classification, the T5 model's encoder takes input text and decoder generates a label as a prediction. T5 model is pre-trained using colossal cleaned version of common crawl's web crawl corpus which is also called a C4 corpus. The training objective of T5 is MLM. T5 has several variants like T5 small, T5 base, T5 large, T53B and T511B. T5 small has about 60 million parameters, T5 base to 20 million parameters, T5 large 770 million parameters, T53B 3 billion parameters and T511B with a whooping 111 billion parameters. Then the next encoder decoder only architecture we will be looking into is BART. BART stands for bidirectional autoregressive transformers. BART combines the pre-training objectives of BERT and GP3 with the encoder-decoder architecture. The input sentence undergoes one of the following simple masking, sentence permutation, token deletion and document rotation. This transformation aims to distort the inputs and then the decoder tries to construct the original sentence. This pre-training objective makes BART more flexible and good to use for NLG and NLU tasks. Then we have M2M 100 as another encoder decoder architecture. This M2M 100 is the first model to translate between 100 languages. While most of the language models deal with only one language per translation, this M2M 100 leverages the information and patterns of multiple languages to translate over 100 different languages. This model uses a prefix token which is similar to that of CLS token. This prefix token indicates the source and target language. Then we have Big Bird. The maximum context size in transform models is limited because it utilizes memory in terms of quadratic requirements. Big Bird model solves this memory issue or memory requirement challenge by using a sparse form of attention mechanism which enables it to scale in linear fashion. This allows for scaling from 512 tokens in most BERT models to 4096 tokens in Big BERT. This model is heavily used in tasks like text summarization due to its ability to model long-term dependencies. 
So guys, that's all concerning with all the major and important transformer architectures or what I call as a transformer tree. It should be noted that all the models which are discussed in this video are available on Hugging Face Hub and can be fine tuned as per the problem statement which we want to solve. If you like this short video of transformer tree, please give a like to this video, share this video with your friends and subscribe to this channel. Thank you.